everyone, it's Melissa here, and thanks so much for joining me. For today's video, I'd like to show you ah, homemade cement, or I should say faux cement garland. I've got to be honest, I am so obsessed with this that I am literally trying to figure out how I can make one of these for every room in my house. That's not overkill, is it? So it was a really simple and fun project and I can't wait to show you how I achieved this. So let's check it out. So for this project, there's really minimal stuff we need. So to start, I use some air dry clay. And I really wish I had one of those melon ball scooper outer <laughs> spoons because I really feel it would help to keep everything consistent. But I tried to just eyeball it and you can too. I really just started with trying to make as many balls as I can. Um, you'll, you will find that there will be lines in it. And so it's okay to kind of squish it around, really manipulate it until you have it as smooth as you can be. I made about, I don't know, 25, 26. So then I needed to make a hole and I had a straw. It was a really good size for diameter. And I just carefully poked that through so that I wasn't squishing the ball. Um, but I was still making a hole. I went ahead and I did that for every single ball and then I let it dry uh, approximately overnight and I was ready for the next step. So I used gray paint and this was really to give that cement look. Um, word of advice, it takes a long time to uh, to paint those by hand. So hey, bring in reinforcement and you know what, I just went ahead and started using my hand. I was really impatient. So you could even use something like gray spray paint and that will really knock them all out uh, as quick as you can. So once that was dry, I didn't show how I cut it up, but if you can see the sponge, I really made it less smooth, I guess is the key word. Um, I didn't want that when you start to stipple. And if you notice here, I really tried to take off a lot of paint and that's, that's something important is you're just trying to dab it on. And if you see, because I made it not as smooth, it's not all covering the entire ball with white. It's only adding pieces. And that's going to help with that dimension and really make it look like that true cement. So I just went ahead and I did that for all of them. And I even tried to kind of roll it around to not use my fingers if you have to, but you can do it however way, whichever way is the easiest for you. Then I went ahead and once it was dry, I tried to do a second layer and this was just to add more dimension, you know, the more layers, the more dimension. I honestly don't know if it actually helped, but here's the finished product before I sealed it and I think it looked really good. So next I just put a clear matte um, protective spray over it. I sprayed it, I flipped it around and sprayed it again and once it was dry, I was ready for the next step. So I have this jute twine and it was pretty thin. So I did double it to make it uh, like two strands, but you can go ahead and depending on the diameter of straw you used uh, for your hole, you can gear that twine to be as thick or thin as you want. And then because I was making this like a thread, I tried to create a needle with uh, some tape and it really did do the trick. And this is just to help because you're really kind of like sewing and um, it just helps so that at the end of your twine, you have all of that fraying that you don't wanna to try to compete with. And so you can do it this way and then cut it off at the end. So I just made sure my string was long enough so I could put all of my pieces and it really is a guessing game. And luckily I only had to guess once and I didn't have to uh, start over. So this is absolutely up to you if you would like to add knots to your garland. I chose to do it just to um, really show off the twine a little bit more. And I had to really try hard with my knots to keep them close as I could uh, together. And this is just really helps with, with the overall look and making each uh, cement, you know, faux cement uh, ball look and stand out on its own. So the next step is the tassel at the end. And so you'll see my hands are really spread out. And that was really because I was trying to get the tassel long enough. Um, I wasn't quite sure how long I needed it. So I would rather make it too long and cut it later, which I ended up cutting later. So you'll see. So at this point, I just have to 
make a little ball at the end and the, or I should say loop at the end so that it can attach to the garland and then the bottom part's going to be the tassel effect. So once I tied all of that up, I went ahead and cut the loops that I had created and now it will have that kind of more tassel look. I'm, I'm there, I'm closer to the finished product. So I know it looks a little messy right now, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to just clean it up with cutting the loose ends. And then it's the task of attaching. So learn from my mistakes. If you see at the very end, I really didn't leave enough space. And if I really would have thought about this hard, harder, I would have left a lot more string at the end of that part of the garland just so that it was easier for me to cut and then just cutting off the loose ends. And here's where I'm talking about, about cutting the tassel. Uh, I gave it a little haircut just so that it looked more polished. And then I went ahead and did the exact same thing for the other side, attached it, and now I am all set to decorate. The thing I love about this is the versatility in how you can utilize it. You can add it to vignettes, you can place it on books. And what I like about garlands as home decor is it really helps to complete the look of your vignette, but it can also take it up a notch. That just about wraps up today's video. I hope that it helps you to be able to create this own decor in your own home. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. It always helps to grow my channel. Until next time, I hope this has helped you to stay inspired.